I absolutely love my Fuji gear. I love the colors. I love the design of the cameras and lenses. But the truth is that since I switched from uh, Canon, I've had a few issues with uh, the lenses and cameras. And for some of you, that might be a deal breaker. For me, it wasn't. But today, we're going all, all over those problems that I've had and how Fujifilm fixed them. It's a bit, a bit different sometimes. Let's talk first maybe uh, about lenses. Um, and let's also get this out of the way. This is not a hate video against Fuji. Probably all of the issues that I've had with my lenses, my Fuji lenses, you could also have them with any other brand. So if you're about to get angry and mad at me, please don't. This is not a hate video, as I said. And we are going to talk also about how good they are built, but that comes at the end of the video. I have two very good examples for that. You will see. Now, the very first problem that I had with a Fuji gear camera or lens or whatever, I'm starting with the wider angles. Uh, was with the 16 XX 16 millimeters f 2.8, one of the Fuji Crown lenses. This little beauty. I love these lenses. I love also the 35 f2. That's my favorite lens ever. And this one, I also loved it actually. Back at that time, it was a bit disappointed not to have the f2 aperture like the other ones, like the 50, the 23, and the 35. But the truth is that I was very happy with it. I've been shooting with it. Uh, I love how how uh, little it was, how light it was. I love the feeling of the aperture ring, and it never disappointed me. That's the truth. Until one day, when I was in <laughs> when I was in Spain, the, the the aperture ring simply kind of collapsed. It wouldn't move, and I, you could hear that something was on the way when you were uh, moving it. Also, when you moved the lens a little bit and you put it next to your ear, you could hear some kind of, uh, I would say, a screw or something moving inside the lens. And I bet that was the part that was keeping somehow some other part of the lens from, from moving. And in the moment that I felt it, I couldn't move it anymore. I was stuck. I just either want to force it to make it, you know, to avoid making it worse. And in the moment that I had landed back in, in Vienna after my trip, I went to the data ship here to the Fujifilm shop, told them, hey, this, this is a pretty new lens. It was only, I don't know, 10 months old or something. And I had purchased it in Germany, in Bamberg, and I live in Austria, in Vienna. Uh, for that, the dealership asked me for uh, 40 euros fee so that they could manage my, my issue. And they sent it back to Fuji. Fujifilm returning after two, three weeks, already repair for no cost, obviously, because it's under warranty. But it was kind of annoying. Also, I really didn't like the fact that they asked for money from to to fix a product that I bought in Europe. It just felt wrong to to pay when the the, the lens is under warranty. And probably the dealership, the shop, could have done a better job, keeping me happy but not getting 40 euros, that would have made a huge difference. And it actually made me buy my next lens, not with them, but somewhere else. And now, if we continue down the focal length path, the next lens that I had a pretty big issue with was uh, probably now my favorite. Uh, as I said, my favorite is the 35 F2. Uh, this is, yeah, making his way to the top my of my favorites this is a 33 millimeters f 1.4 dr this is a new one it costs around i think it's eight or nine hundred euros or dollars or pounds or whatever uh, your currency is it's not a cheap lens that's what i wanted to say uh, i brought this as my all-rounder prime to a trip a work trip uh, in India, we were uh, traveling from Kerala to the north, to Mumbai. And after, I guess, eight, nine days, I was shooting with this, uh, with this lens in a coffee uh, factory. And I realized that the, the autofocus engine didn't work. Uh, the camera wasn't focused anymore. And I got a little uh, error message in my X-T3 saying, hey, 
please turn off and on the camera, there's something wrong, blah, 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 blah. Now, something very characteristic of this lens is the linear autofocus engine. And you can feel it going up and down when the, the lens is not connected to a camera where it's not mounted. But when it is, you shouldn't feel that weight. You can even hear it a bit, I'm afraid of doing it. I really don't want to do it. I've seen people shaking the lens, it's like crazy. Don't do it. Uh, the point was, I was in India shooting with this, taking portraits, and I, it stopped working, and I could feel, even when the, cam the lens was mounted on the camera, that the, the weights of the, of the autofocus engine were still moving freely. And yeah, it stopped working. Uh, that's, that's, that was it. Uh, I could still try to focus manually sometimes, and I lost one of my uh, favorite lenses during a, a walk trip. At least it was at the end of the trip, so most of it was already done. And I had with me the 16 to 55, so I could shoot essentially everything. But I was a bit sad to lose one of my favorite lenses. And regarding the Fuji service, uh, I flew back to Vienna after that job. Uh, I went to the same shop, the same Fuji dealer uh, in the city. Uh, I gave them my lens and they sent it back to the service. And the problem was that this, this particular lens, I had bought it in BH, B, B and H photo in New York. So I imported it actually, because back then they were the only ones who could uh, ship on time for, the, for this trip to India. And they did not ask this time for any fee, but I do remember it took them forever because uh, somehow the responsible for doing this lens were Fujifilm UK, don't ask me why. And it took them almost three months to return the, the lens. That's, it was a bit yeah, annoying. Uh, you lose one of the uh, all-rounded lenses just like, like that for no reason. Yeah. And that was only, I, I don't know, it was like a month old or two months, not much more. Anyway, every time I think about it, I get angry. <laughs> so issue that I've had well, a bit more like lighting, not big issues, not big problems. And uh, it was with the um, 56 1.2, not this one, this one is the VR version. We are going to talk about it later. But with the older one, you know, with that very slow lens, but fantastic, super magical. In that one, I, I had some kind of stains inside the metal parts uh, of, the, of the lens. And Although it didn't affect it, optically speaking, it annoyed me to see those stains. And when I brought it again to the same Fuji shop, uh, there was this guy taking a look at it with huge lights and super technical, such a professional guy. And he didn't even see what I meant. And there was, yeah, some kind of stains. I'll show you some pictures I took when, when, I, when I was concerned, kind of. And yeah, the truth is that he recommended not to open the lens because it would get very pricey very quickly. And since it worked flawlessly, I just sold it uh, a little bit later with a pretty big discount. And before I talk about the good stuff, uh, let's talk also about the cameras, the issues that I've had with the bodies. So far, the truth is, after four or five years of Fujifilm cameras, I have four of them. Uh, I have never really had any big problem. Like the camera never gave up on me or stopped working for no reason. Maybe there was some kind of bug. Maybe I had to turn it on or off. Maybe I had to take the camera out, uh, the camera, the battery out of the camera. But that was it. I didn't really need to do anything else. Except uh, lately, my beloved Fuji XT3 has given me some problems, namely. It works just fine if you're work, uh, working horizontally, like that, like usually. But in the moment that you go uh, vertical and you put it like that, sometimes, only sometimes, it will go into video mode. Usually I shoot in uh, continuous low or, or just standard, or single, sorry, not the standard. And it goes into video mode because on, the, on my dial, on the left dial, the video mode is right at the bottom. 
and I have the feeling that something might be loose on the controls in the inside. And well, while it's a bit annoying, the truth is that it doesn't happen often enough for me to spend, I don't know how much money to fix it. And for now, I can live with it. It's just a bit of annoying when you put it vertical, you want to shoot, and instead of shoot, you're thinking, uh, I don't know, a seven seconds uh, video instead. But yeah, so far I, I live with it, and I guess I can see that at some point down the line, I might need to get it fixed. But now, as I said, the good part. The two moments when I realized that these lenses are built like in tanks. I want to talk to you about the 16 to 55 2.8. This one I use when I'm shooting, I don't know, anything for a client or I have to shoot in a studio and then really can't work with a with a prime if I need the versatility of a zoom. This is the, the way to go. This is also the one I brought to, to India. Well, quality-wise is fantastic, but I don't want to digress and make a review. I had this lens while I was working in Croatia. I was shooting, uh, again, some videos, some motorbike videos with my colleagues. And I left it together with my X-T4 on a bench. The problem was I didn't see it. And I had put my jacket over it. And when I took my jacket back, camera and lens fell into the floor, concrete floor. I, I only remember the, the sound of it, like chum. And I, I remember that I didn't want to, to look at it because I thought, okay, it's gone. But the truth is that other than a little scratch on the base of the X-T4 and a more or less damaged ND filter, let me try to show you. I don't know if it will get me. Apparently not. I will have to film it later. A more or less uh, damaged ND filter, the lens itself, it didn't really have any sort of problem, as you can see. That alone made me realize how well built these lenses are. Not much uh, later on, my colleague Patrick, hello Patrick, if you're watching this video, <laughs> dropped the 24, what is it, 24 to 70 f2.8 from Canon and completely destroyed the mount. That's, yeah. I don't know if it's bad luck or build quality. I don't know and I don't want to test it. And without any doubt, the my luckiest day with the lens, I don't know if it's luck again, but I have to share with you, was with this lens, the uh, 56 1.2 VR. So I was shooting not long ago, a week or two weeks ago. I was coming home, I got on the tram, so I put my big design bag, the one that is opens on the side, on my lap. I opened the zip and suddenly I saw something so I kept sh shooting something <laughs> and I, at that point I realized oh oh my god that's my sub so I just moved jumped out of the the tram put my my back on my back backpack on the back and in that movement I felt like something was off and heard uh, a a poof so it try so something heavy fall into the floor and then I saw my 56 mm f1.2 and all the thousand euros that it cost rolling on the sidewalk. The sidewalk, by the way, that was so disgustingly dirty with snow and ice and everything. Rolling on the sidewalk, then falling from the sidewalk to the street, then rolling a little bit more and getting stuck on the rail tracks under the tram. So I... Uh, <laughs> A sign that the driver, please don't drive away, wait. And I ran under the trap, took it and went home. I cleaned it a little bit because it had a lot of water, a lot of ice and snow. I I, I didn't even have the, the, I was going to say to have the balls, or cojones. I didn't have the cojones to look at the lens and I just put it back on my backpack and I thought, fuck me. My life, I just lost a thousand euros and I didn't even know if this one, particularly this one, was already insured or not. So I went home, it wasn't long, uh, from the tram station, sat down, knowing that it was completely destroyed, I was ready to, to, to accept it. 
uh, cleaning a lot of, a little bit more, checked that the front element was actually intact, that I couldn't believe. I was like, how? Checked back, expecting it to see it broken. And again, I want to show you intact, perfect. And what I do see on the sides, I will send me later, but let me show you here too. I don't know if you can see it. It's right there. There are a couple of scratches on that side and around here. And you can even see the hit over here. So I put it on my XH2 and I thought, okay, uh, it would not even work. It would probably just stray, say, hey, the lens is damaged. The autofocus engine is broken, whatever, something's wrong inside. That was prepared to see some kind of broken glass inside. And guess what? It worked. Like always. I was I kept it <laughs> I kept trying to make it fail. I try I tried everything I could and it just work. No issues whatsoever. I just couldn't believe it. I posted on, on Twitter, on Instagram, everywhere because how is that even possible? Such a heavy lens falling like free fall from one meter 40 or so onto the floor and it didn't have anything it didn't even have the cap when it fell that little protection it didn't have it it wasn't inside the bag nothing it fell like that onto the floor and nothing actually happened yeah that's my thank you note to fuji for building such uh lenses anyway uh there you go those were all the issues that I've had with my Fuji lenses. I mean, special issues. Obviously, sometimes there is some uh, dust or something, but it happens essentially all the time with all the lenses. And yeah, I hope you are luckier than me. Uh, probably, probably you are luckier than me. It's really not that hard. Thanks for being there again. Subscribe, like if you did like it, and have a very good day. Ciao guys, bye bye.